this this talk is more about features of the language and how those features enable us to solve problems that either are not uh, solvable at all in Java or they are solvable but with a few caveats that are nasty. Um, before we start, um, I don't have a slide, a slide with all my details but um, I've been playing with computers, basically working with them since uh, 2001. Uh, the like, deep networking, programming, everything. Um, and I'm, I've been working with Scala since a couple of years ago because I got bored of Java. Uh, <laughs> 10 years is too long, or 12. I don't know, I don't want to remember. Um, um, so yeah, uh, I'm also a contractor, so wherever I'm now, I'm not going to be there next year. Um, but yeah, today we are going to, to talk about polymorphism and how some uh, functional concepts, which are the type classes, uh, help us to do ad hoc polymorphism in a, in a better way. Uh, so basically, um, yeah, I'm also a backend developer, so this, the slides, they don't look nice, sorry. <laughs> uh, it, it is what it is. I tried to get hold of my wife to fix that, but uh, I wasn't successful. Uh, so, polymorphism. Does anyone need an explanation of what's that? Good. So basically, we have different types. We use the same message to communicate to these different types, and um, we get uh, we don't get uh, odd behavior. We don't get failures. We get different behavior based on the types, but that's expected because otherwise we wouldn't have different types. But the idea is we can treat different unrelated stuff uh, in a similar way. Um, of them, there are three types. Uh, the first one is ad hoc, and ad hoc means that uh, the polymorphism is going to happen based on on who I am. So basically, if Actually, no. Who who the parameter I'm calling my, uh, my 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 collaborator with is. So, if I have a, a library that sorts uh, lists or arrays, whatever, um, if I'm passing an integer, then this method is going to be picked by the compiler, uh, by the by the random actually. And if I'm passing a a, a list of strings, this one is going to be picked. Um, I didn't use a list on purpose because uh, type error sure that that wouldn't work with with overloading. Um, but basically, what wasn't can, can anyone spot a, a problem with something like this? Uh, yeah. Polymorphism has used dynamic dispatch and that's statically dispatched. It's overloaded. Yes, that is another problem. Uh, uh, from from l l let's position ourselves uh, on on the f on the shoes of somebody that is building an API that is going to be used by random people that you don't know, right? So the problem here is that my library is very very good. It sorts integer, it sorts strings. If I give them a collection of tables, that doesn't work. It's not going to compile. Um, so. What it has is that it's nice. It's nice because I've, I've done. I, I, I have a bunch of methods. They are ready made. The, the user can call them. They sort the list. Boom! It works. Now, if the user has a different type that he wants to use my library with, then my library is useless for him. So uh, it, it's, 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 it's lacking on flexibility. So then, different type of polymorphism is using subtyping. So basically, I have a common interface, or an abstract class, but whatever you pick, and uh, different objects will implement that interface, and they will behave however they need based on the type. And so if I call uh, the, the, the method defining an interface implemented by object uh, type A, it's going to do something. If I do it with type B, it's going it's to do something else. And the example of that is a comparator, because we are the whole talk is about sorting stuff. Um, by the way, uh, is um, somebody here not familiar with the Streams API on Java 8? Good. 
Um, so yeah, we have a comparator and we have int and string comparators and they get objects because that's what the interface gets. So the, 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 the problem here with subtyping is that we need to pick uh, generic enough types and it doesn't really look nice because we will have to cast in here or check if they are ints and then do something. Um, and the other problem, this uh, the, 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 the good thing is it is extensible, right? We say our library works with comparators and so the user can implement their own comparators and everyone is happy. Uh, now the problem is the, the types we have to use in the parameters, they are not overloaded like in the, in the previous definition, so we need to be, the, the user needs to be careful and cast and so, so not really nice. Which leads us to the third type, which is parametric, which is basically generics. So um, if we look at the same example again and we have generics, then we can implement the, comparator, the comparators and they are uh, type safe because the, this is going to be checked at compile time that you are not doing something fancy and, and, and if you get here something is going to be an integer. Now, uh, the, 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 the pro with this is that it's extensible with the user, it can work with any type and it, it, is, it looks more type safe and I don't have that nasty casting stuff. It's, it's, it's better. Now, the problem is that um, it's harder to for, for my library to provide us a, a, a pre-made set of, of working things because yeah I can I can I can ship a bunch of comparators but then the user needs to know that they exist and it, it, it needs to know where to, 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 to find them and it, it's not as easy as calling a method and then the dispatch will will figure out based on my type um, so can we have both uh, Yes, we can, and, and Java has uh, an attempt of that since Java 1.8. Uh, so basically, in Java, if we have these two uh, lists of same elements with different types, so the example is easier. Um, if, if I try to print a sorted version of those, basically, uh, we get a stream, we sort it, and then we collect it to a list, and does that work? Anyone? Come on. Okay. I, I, I've been teaching at uni for five years, so I try to get the people, you know. Uh, so yeah, it works. Uh, of course, uh, it's simple enough for the, 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 the JDK to, to support that. Now, Let's introduce uh, this nice uh, wrapper thingy that basically wraps an integer and, and that's something not very important, but it's a custom type, right? So good this list, which again, it has the exact same order as the previous ones. Um, if we have this list, good this work. Wha what is going to happen? First of all, why, why it doesn't work? Private field access, and if they implement a comparator, they can't access the field. Isn't it just going to print out object? Okay. It's, it's going to have a nice class cast exception because it's going to tell me, yeah, I tried to sort this, but uh, it's not comparable. So, poof. Uh, but the problem is that that happens in runtime. So, of course, we should be writing tests for everything and stuff, but it would be nice if the compiler would prevent us of, of being stupid and, and don't do this. Um, so, there is a way to solve this? Yes, there is. We can, yeah, yeah, I forgot about this. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, to me, after working in Scala, this is, uh, this is a big what the fuck. I mean, I, 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 how, how can, I write some code and then it just magically fails because I didn't provide a type. It's, it's just mental. Now, <laughs> do we understand? I mean, why why the compiler doesn't warn us about this? Why 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 did the API is 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 so crap? Now the problem is that um, if we all I mean we could solve this by always asking for a comparator here, right? That will solve the problem because everything sorted would be um, comparable. But then, 
for most of the cases where we have inter or, or standard types, we will have to provide comparators and that will be crap. Or we could say, oh, you know what? Um, you are not going to be able to be the list if it's not comparable, so all the sorting will work. That's also crap because most of the times so we don't want to sort a list, so the, the, the list is not generic anymore. So we don't have a nice way to say, hey, uh, how do we make this uh, simple for the, the, the standard cases, like the, the, the simple values and stuff, and powerful enough so the user can uh, cast, uh, provide their own way of sorting? So what Java does is like hope for the best, and, uh, <laughs> and basically otherwise it will fail, and then you will say, oh, yeah, fine, I'm going to give you a comparator, which is this nice lamb that we put here. And if we do that, uh, yes, we will get um, we will get the the, the 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 thing sorted. But do you agree with me that that's kind of crap, right? Even if you love Java, that's kind of crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot to put the the parental advisor as the, in the first slide. Uh, I tend to swear. Sorry. Um, so yeah, we want the compiler to be our friend. Uh, the compiler can do a lot of job and the good thing about the compiler doing stuff is that we don't have to write tests for that. So the amount of unit tests decreases because there is a lot of information encapsulated in the types which means uh, our code is, is it explains by itself a bit more and it's also safer and it's easier to maintain because having tests is nice but when you have a lot of tests as even a simple refactor can force you to fix all the tests which you should do but i'm not saying i mean i'm super 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 pro testing but if i can delegate some of them in the compiler then yeah that's why i hate javascript because <laughs> i have to write many more tests um so scala how type classes, I have to speak to this thing. How type classes help us? Uh, okay, we have the same two lists in Scala. Notice also the nice syntax, all type inference. This is 2010 model, throw away all the other shit. <laughs> um, and also, there is no stream, no collect, no, no bullshit, right? We say in that sorted, boom. That works, of course. Yay. Um, and it's print as a list, not as an array with the brackets. I don't know what they were thinking when they did the two string of a list. Um, so remember our friend. Um, by the previous presentation, we already know about what is a case class. But just to remind you, <sighs> <laughs> so beautiful. Um, and so let's say we have <laughs> we have a list of those um, those wrappers. Uh, again, notice the nice syntax, no news, no nothing. It's, it's quite nice. It's still verbose, but that's the name of the type. Hey, what can I do? Um, question: Does that work? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Does it work? Does it compile? Well, I've been saying compiler many times already, so if you think yes, uh, you, you haven't been paying attention. No. We get a nice error at compile time. Um, so basically, he's telling us, forget about this, ordering is not there for a wrapper. Sorry, we don't have uh, enough arguments to method sort. But what arguments? I'm not passing any arguments to this. So how come the error is saying that we need some arguments. Okay, let's look at the definition at the, the signature of that method. Um, what? Okay, yeah. I may miss a little uh, Anyway, okay. We can sort this in the same way we sorted with Java, right? We create an ordering, which is basically the Scala version of comparator. And we say, yeah, given an XY, we compare, blah, blah, blah. And we pass it to sorted. Notice that now, somehow, it has a parameter. 
and then if we execute this it works now this this thing uh, the first time you see it is like how come the same method can have parameters and then but the, the, the last time we tried to use it it doesn't and how come the compiler knows that now it's fine but before it didn't and then uh, but but for an integer it didn't ask for anything so this is a signature of the sorted method in any Scala collection. Uh, it's a simplify a little bit, but you get the idea. So to sort something of type B, um, we will return another list of type B, uh, and then we have this. This is this is by the way this is the only definition of the method sort. It's not that we have a method with the parameter and, and a method without the parameter. The method always have the parameter. The thing is, the magic is in this keyword. It's an implicit parameter. What that does mean? I mean, if, if you remember the error, it says no implicit order in the find for wording for, for, for wrapper. So what, what is this implicit? This implicit is a, is a keyword that will tell the compiler to say, hey, if you find some implicit variable, value, we don't like variables, of this type and with this type it's not just this type is the whole thing is a type in Scala so it has to be an ordering of type B which is the type we are trying to sort so basically if you find something in scope of that type the compiler will automatically complete the the method invocation by passing that uh, ordering instance to the sorting method so in Scala when we, when we wrote the sorting for an integrator or for a string, it's not that it's, it's working like in Java under the hood trying to figure out if it is a comparable or not. The compiler for us stick an ordering of type string or, or, or type int automatically because it knows about those and we will get on, on how it does that. But let's, let's see how, how this would work in a very simple example. If the, the same ordering we defined before as a, as a standard val, if we now define it as an implicit val, then we can leave the parameter out in here. And if we run this, uh, not shift, uh, it's going to work. So basically what is happening for an int is that this thing is coming from somewhere else, but it's there. And that's why the compiler can check it. And, and that's the thing that you cannot do in Java. You cannot rely on the compiler to complete your, your method. Can't because when it, it, the, the, the variable is of list of some type and you cannot reassign uh, yeah. with a list of a different type. Yes, but you can pass objects that over subtype of that type that actually implements the variable. But you you could do the same in Scala. The the, 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 the thing is yes. is is the this this the strict of that the compiler can be more restrictive because. Uh, with the implicit parameter it knows the type is trying to work on and then it can always request it, it can ex always expect to have a comparator in Java the problem is we can we cannot always expect to have a comparator so we, we rely on whatever is in the collection being comparable yes but in, in Scala yeah we infer the type of that value right yes given given by the value yes so you infer the, the minimum type. Yes. The minimum type. Right? Yes. And you know whether that type is going to implement comparable or not. But in Java, you say this type, you say the list is of you pass in generics this type. Uh -huh. But really, the objects that you can pass inside can actually implement comparable. I don't understand the question. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Yes, and the base comparison. interface. Yes. So you can have like a only for some of the subtypes, 
it can yeah. implement comparable. So, I mean, yeah. So basically, the issue would only. But you're still playing with fire, no? But but the thing is, if you're trying to sort something that that you don't have control over it, and 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 that's not comparable, to, to In, oh, it's will, it will fail. What if it is? It, yeah, but that is the problem. What if it, you are going only to find it in runtime? That, that's the difference between Scala and Java, right? Not really. The the, the typing in that in the, at that sense is no. is equally restrictive yes, in both. Yes, but in Scala you are going to infer and you are going to infer the minimum type, right? No, you 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 have to infer the exact type. I don't think that type classes works with uh, with inger inheritance. I, I, I haven't played with that. I think they. Mm. Well, it depends. Yeah, it depends on the on the on the on the covariancy and everything. No, but I'm not talking about that. Okay. I think it like a perfect pizza and beer. Yes. <laughs> ca ca can I take that for for the for later? Um, so yeah, uh, we have our our nice um, case class. So basically, we say that um, the compiler has magic ways to uh, find the ordering. And, and, and that magic way is the implicit. Now, the implicit lookup has uh, several steps that I don't remember by memory, but basically it's going to try to se to search first from, from the most particular to the most general. So if you have an implicit val, like we just did in the, in the previous slide, um, because that's, that's defined right there, the compiler will just pick that and forget about anything else. If it doesn't find something in the, in the closed scope, it's going to look at uh, if we are inheriting some implicit val of that type, or if we are importing some implicit val uh, or def of, the, or, or, of that type. And if it doesn't, it's going to be nice and it's going to be look at the companion objects. The companion objects in Scala are basically... So Scala is pure object-oriented, not like Java. So static doesn't exist because that's not object-oriented. So what you have in Scala is the companion object. An object is a singleton, basically, and a companion object is a singleton that has the exact same name of the type, and so they basically work uh, together. So because it's a singleton and is related to the type, whatever you put there is only created once and is accessible even if it is private by the class, so it's more or less like having a static, but in a, in a pure object-oriented way. So what the compiler is going to do is say, okay, for this, this type wrapper, if we go and to the, to the companion object and define the ordering in here, that means that after we do that, we can just ask for the, the wrappers to be sorted and it's going to work without us having to define um, an ordering for it. So basically, if we have a class that we sort uh, in a bunch of places in our system and we know that, that we want to just ha have that, that definition once, we put that in the companion object and suddenly our class is, uh, is sortable uh, even without having to touch its signature. We don't have to go on. In Java you would have to say, okay, my class is comparable and I'm, I'm going to implement the compare to. Here we keep it as a separate concern and we say, yeah, my class provides a, a comparator, an ordering, and the compiler knows how to pick it up without me having to, to, to be like teaching it like a, like a kid, um, which is good. Now, this is good from the user point of view. Now, from the API developer point of view, um, we have another thing. So the compiler will look in, in both companion objects. First, in the companion object of the class we are trying to uh, to sort, right, the 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 the, um, the type constructor, uh, the type parameter, sorry, and then, but I don't remember the order, but it's going to look in both. So it's going to look in the companion object in this case of int to see if there is a comparator, and it's also going to look on the companion object of ordering. This is, this is actually a simplified view of the companion object of ordering provided by the Scala um, uh, library. So basically, Scala, out of the box, defines different orderings for the common types. So that's why when we, when we just type list of one, two, three, whatever, and then we do sorted, it works. Because 
the compiler starts looking in the implicit scope and when it reaches to the top it's like okay is it in int? nope it is in ordering? yeah boom there you go and it completes the invocation to that method with that particular parameter so then um, so then that's, that's where, where we get the, the best of both worlds we can do ad hoc like we, we, we provide methods with some implementations for different types and at the same time the user can extend that and provide new implementations in this case of ordering or, or whatever is our, our type class to extend the polymorphism to types that are defined on, on their side of the world on, 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 yeah, on their, 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 their whatever um, so yeah yes five minutes yes good hey <laughs> Objects, does the Scala compiler look for? I was, I was a bit confused. So, let's say I had a list of ints. Yes. Um, where would the, how would the Scala compiler know, for example, to look in your in the ordering type class? It, it, it can't check every. Does it check every type class available? No, it checks. I don't remember which one it looks at first, but it's gonna check. Um, so in the int, let, 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 let me go back. So at the, the type class, the, the definition of the, of the type class is a, a class plus a type constructor, a type parameter, right? And the whole thing is a type. So it's going to look only in these two types. Uh, again, I don't remember the order, but whatever the order is, if the thing is there, it's going to pick that one. Otherwise, it's going to bubble up and go to the other one. Um, so yeah, and then if it, if it exhaust all the the possibilities then you you get that compiler or with for for wrapper yeah so assuming you have a list of wrappers yes uh, and the actual objects inside the list are all the subtype of wrapper uh -huh. wrapper has its own comparator yes and the subtype has another comparator which one is it going to use <sighs> i don't know <laughs> I, I. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I think the ordering is uh, is strict, right? Is it's not uh, variant? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because if if so, it's going to it ask for the exact type. So yeah, if you if you have an ordering of a, yeah. of an extending type, then that that's not uh, going to work. Yeah, that's what is. I'm thinking. Equality, the equal subclass is quite Okay. That's it. Okay. Uh, any more questions? We we go to the pub. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's where you can find a presentation if you like it or you care or whatever. And LinkedIn stuff. Thank you.